Thank you. Marge Hilton, 1101 Southeast Fifth Court. Um, I understand what Commissioner or Vice Mayor is saying. Um, I just wonder that if you vote tonight for this proposal, it it's, it just starts it on a roll. In other words, it, once it's once it starts, once you vote yes to to get the project started, can you turn around and say, "Well, we've talked to the residents, and so we changed our mind." I'm just saying. To me, it seems like once you say yes tonight, then it's basically on a roll. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public care to comment on this side? Not seeing anyone. I'm going to close the public to be heard. Mr. Mealy, when did the notification go out for the PNZ meeting? I think the staff might know the answer to that question better than I would. I know it's a certain number of days in advance, but I think they'll know exactly. What date was the PNZ meeting? Uh, PNZ meeting was last month. No, it was uh, Mar uh, March 1st. March 1st. March 1st. And then on March 9th, the letter went out from the city. Well, there was a notification for PNZ and then another one for this. Right. So we've had two notifications that have gone out to the public. Yes. Um, there's been one hearing on this already. Yes. At least we know that they went out enough for at least one person to show up. Um, with some of these other projects, you know, I, I know in, in with some things that you've done and presented in front of us, that you've done extensive community outreach. Yes. Um, I'm going to strongly encourage you to do the same thing on this project as well, if that's what the concerns are. I, I don't know what... <coughs> It's frustrating when letters go out and people are notified and people choose not to participate in the process. Um, and, and, you know, it happens all the time. We, we put things out, people find out about it late or later, and, uh, you know, things get lost in the mail, whatever the case may be. But I, I encourage you to please do some extensive community outreach on this project. We will absolutely do so. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Parnas? There is plenty of time for any district to participate. It's up to the leaders of that district to work the district. I know if there's a project in my district, District 3, I notify every community leader in that district, whether it be Sentry Village or Crystal Lake or the Meadows. So they have the opportunity to discuss it with me, what their feelings are about a particular issue. This is no different. This is a starting point. From here, it'll, let's assume the positive. It passes tonight. It then goes to the Planning Council of the county, then to the county commission, then to the state, I believe, and then it comes back the Planning Council has a second hearing, and so does the County Commission. Then it comes back here. It has to be approved by all of them before it comes back here for us to vote on. There is ample time if any of our four communities, districts, want to get involved in a project for the leaders in that area and I don't just mean commissioners. We have several leaders here, several people that are very active in their community. To spread the word, there's going to be a hearing, show up. They don't show up, they're not interested. They don't care. Those who do, and I see many people here tonight, do care, want to learn, want to find out what's going on in the city. It's not one-sided, it's two-sided. And there's plenty of time between now and a second reading to discuss this, to work it out, yay or nay. So I say, let us move forward. And there's ample time for a community to let its wishes known. 
Uh, Commissioner Drosky and then Vice Mayor Bell. Maybe this is an opportunity to revisit our public notification process again because up on the screen is the, the map and if you notice a large part is either over water or over Dixie Highway. So maybe there's uh, some discretion that can be used to kind of move that circumference when we have projects like this because obviously this project is going to affect those folks more to the north and west than it is the people that don't exist over the water and Dixie Highway. So. The applicant didn't do anything wrong, uh, but I'm saying maybe this is an opportunity for us to, to revisit you know, our ordinance and maybe in situations like this, and like the villages of Hillsborough Park, not that I'm going back to that, that we can have some discretion on where this, you know, this circumference goes and, and shift it when there's more residents that are affected um, than those that fall outside of it where there's nobody living. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, and to my esteemed colleague, Mr. Parnes, I don't want the people in my district to think that I did not work the district or try to do what I was supposed to do in order to get them engaged. I want the folks to know I asked staff to schedule a meeting with me, uh, for me, with all of those people that were in the affected area. Staff never did that. So here I am now at this stage trying to get my point across. Somebody dropped the ball. It wasn't Mr. Mealy. It certainly was not the uh, commissioner. I tried, tried to straighten this out by asking uh, that Mr. Mealy move this back until the uh, next commission meeting. I owe it to the residents that I serve. I have not left them, or I did not drop the ball on them one way or the other. I expect that when I ask staff to arrange a meeting for me, to meet with people in the affected area, that it will get done. It did not get done, Mr. City Manager, and that's why we are at this point right now. Thank you. Thank you, City Manager. Yep. Thank you. Just uh, to clarify for Vice Mayor Battle, Again, our job as staff is to process without bias these types of uh, applications. It is not to hold meetings on behalf of the applicant in many other scenarios. We did pass the information along um, to both the city attorney as well as um, Mr. Mealy that you know they would need to have a meeting and they had no problem having the meeting as Mr. Mealy stated. But for staff to have this would put us potentially in an impartial um, status with the application. So that's why it was not moved forward. So no, I thought. That's, that's not, and, and you're, so. you're all pointing here right now. Yeah. What, I, what I am saying is that I asked staff to schedule a meeting with me, with the people in my district. Not about this stuff that's going on tonight. I understand this. But I want you to know, basically, I uh, uh, want to clear this up to let you know that my request was for staff to arrange a meeting, a district meeting, a partial district meeting, with those people in the affected area, and it never materialized. That's all, all right. I want to say. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. Uh, city manager? Yeah. Do we have the dates for notice for PNZ? Yes, well. please. Thank you. Thank you. The Planning and Zoning Board public notice went out on January 19th. January 19th? January 19th for the February 1st Planning and Zoning Board meeting. And the City Commission public notice went out on March 9th for the March 20th meeting. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mealy, what is the height that you're looking to present? Um, we haven't really determined that yet. That was an artist. Uh, picture we're looking at zoning districts now and where we can fit so we're not sure yet and, and mayor uh, I know earlier there was a question I don't like saying this but I think mr. Soroka would agree that just because you vote yes on a first reading doesn't mean you have to vote yes on a second reading as much as I hope you would vote yes on a second reading <laughs> that is correct no I think at any point in time whenever there's a vote we certainly can change our mind and vote any way that you know seems to fit what's in the best interest of the residents but I will say this the, the point has been well made uh, and 
it, it becomes a little harder the further down the path you go, and, and it's in the best interest of everyone to get people involved early on. And, and I want to also point out that we understand that it's our responsibility to make sure that we reach out to the residents. So I, after tonight, for successful, I will get together with Vice Mayor Battle and we'll figure out who we should contact and we'll do it right away. Okay. Every portion of the city is unique also. Notifications uh, aside, these mailings that go out, it is difficult to reach out to uh, certain areas of the city for a wide variety of reasons. Some have HOAs, some don't. Have, that makes it a lot easier, certainly. Some don't have HOAs. Some don't have newsletters. Some uh, some areas might not be real adept with uh, getting emails, or uh, they prefer someone going door to door, or wide variety of different notification attempts. So. Uh, I think it's unfair to say, well, if this was in District 4 or if this was in District 1, the people would be heard. No, uh, just like District 2 has the ability to be heard as well. It's just I think the approach sometimes uh, needs to fit whatever the area happens to be and what is the most effective way to, to do community outreach. And all different areas of the city, the island side can be a lot different than the cove side. And it is very difficult, I can tell you as an elected official, to try to get out and reach people and talk to them. So, um, because, uh, you know, I, I had, when I was a District 4 Commissioner, I had quarterly meetings all the time, and, you know, uh, as large as the district is, uh, it was sometimes difficult to get more than 50 people to attend. And um, <coughs> it, it is a challenge, and, and I certainly respect uh, the Vice Mayor's position on this. Um, I, I, I do support the project, and, and I would like to see it move forward. But I'm only going to vote that way as long as we have some community outreach that's uh, uh, as part of this. So at this point, I think we're looking for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve the first reading of this motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. We have a roll call, please. Commissioner Drosky? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Tarnes? Yes. Vice Mayor Battle? No. Mayor Gantz? Yes. So we are now at the public comment section of the agenda. I'll just briefly read a short snippet of the rules. Persons addressing the commission shall state his or her name and address and may speak for three minutes unless extended for one additional minute by the mayor. All remarks by the public at a commission meeting on an agenda item shall be addressed to the commission as a body and limited to the subject matter before the commission at that particular time. No comment shall be made related to the personal life or personal qualities of any person, and no language which would offend persons of ordinary sensibilities shall be permitted. Thank you. Number one, I have Denise Bogner. I'll, I'll wait just one minute, let some people clear out. Ms. Bogner, if you don't mind waiting for one moment. Not at all. Ladies and gentlemen, we still have a, a meeting to, to proceed with. Ms. Bogner. Hi, I'm Denise Bugner, 1157 Southwest 26th Avenue. I'm going to read this because I'm afraid tears are going to come, but a few weeks ago I had jail 911 to come to my home here in Deerfield Beach for my husband, Dan Bogner. The first responders were very competent and caring, starting with the 911 operator. I'm sorry, but I don't know her name. She calmly walked me through the steps to start chest compress compressions and stayed on the phone with me until the paramedics and sheriff officers arrived. Lieutenant Jean Paul DeMary, Firefighter Paramedic Joseph Bertuccio, Firefighter Paramedic Joel Malls of Medical Rescue Company 111, Captain Thomas Kinsey, Driver Engineer Eric Stage, Firefighter Paramedic Daniel Horkemeyer of Engine Company 66, Deputy Christopher Gonzalez, Deputy Richard McGuire of the Broward Sheriff's Office responded. Very unfortunately for us, they were not able to revive Dan. When Lieutenant DeMary came to tell me, I slid to the floor and Lieutenant DeMary sat on the floor with me until I was able to become a little more stable and stand up to move to the couch. The paramedics left and the two sheriff's deputies stayed with me until Broward County came to take Dan. Deputies Gonzalez and McGuire talked with me and kept me calm for a very long period of time. 
After Deanne was taken away, they asked me for towels that could be thrown away, and they cleaned the blood from our kitchen floor in St. Gary. The caring was above and beyond what I ever imagined first responders to do in an incident such as this. The bad press that has been in the news lately needs to take time to address and praise the excellent, competent, and caring people that are members of our Broward Sheriff's and Broward Emergency Response Team. Thank you. David Cohen, 953 Southeast 6th Street, Deerfield Beach. I um, drafted a letter to you, and I didn't get it out in a timely manner, so I'm going to read it. It begins rather poetically, but I hope I have the three minutes here. Um, some have spoken of our multicultural society as a crucible, a melting pot. I don't feel that that does our society justice because all of the ingredients that make this wonderful alloy have lost their identity. Other people say that we're a rainbow going from black through brown and all the colors to white. But no matter how you form that rainbow, the stripes, except for they blend a little bit, still are separated. I look, my dream, I suppose it's utopian, is to see a kaleidoscope where each individual's identity in every possible way remains separate, distinct, respected, forming a part of a dynamic interplay and beautiful patterns. Well, what I'm really talking about here is tolerance. Forget the kaleidoscope, let's talk about us. And it's not only as a personal issue. I see it also as, as something that is vital for the welfare of everyone. It's not difficult to see everywhere there is a need for tolerance to be actively oriented. Active orientation. Beyond passive acceptance of differences of each other, we must renew our efforts in our time with programs involved active caring. I've been trying, feet are dragging. I'm not getting any younger. The only way that we can be successful in meeting challenges we face in neighborhoods in this town is tolerance, active tolerance. The programs are being implemented all over the country, here in Broward County, uh, in towns like Pompano Beach for the past seven years, uh, recently Tamarack, uh, I think Coconut Creek. If we can't be the first, surely we can try to be the best. Sincerely. Elise Plotkin, 1998 Northeast 7th Street, Deerfield Beach. Um, I just have a few items they have a questions about. Um, what is the policy about roofs in the city? I don't know, if you drive down uh, Hillsboro and you enter Deerfield Beach on the right, right before you get to the S-curve, there's the apartments on the right side of um, Hillsboro, right where the turn is to the beach. Like, Bef I think before the hurricane and now, they have tarps on the top of all their apartments held down with sandbags. Mm -hmm. I mean, how long is that permitted to stay there? First of all, it's, uh, it might be hazardous to the people living there, but um, it also makes the entrance into, the, into Deerfield Beach Island look horrible. Like, how long could it stay? A year, two years until they're, they're required to fix it up? It seems to be indefinite on our, you know, whatever the rules are. Also, um, number two, I have a little list. Um, the plum, there's, 
behind Coco Yogurt and Burger Fry, when you go to the beach right over there, I had brought up several times about the water leakage behind the uh, restaurant, that it's coming from the gutters and the air conditioning on the roof, and it leaks onto the sidewalk and behind the, the restaurant. And it's a health hazard. There's roaches there, and it's just a pool of water, and it just is constantly collected there. And still nobody has done anything about it. And I don't know. I told code enforcement. I just think it's a health hazard. And now that they're building the hotel, of course, I think it's really horrible um, there. Also, we spent, I, there's beautification of Darefield Island. Um, you see it in front of 7-Eleven and um, Island Water Sports. They did improvements there. And the city paid for some of that, and I think the businesses also contributed. But now that it's completed, um, the landscaping and the plants there are overgrown and weeded. And I went to try to remove them, and they have big thorns. And it's just getting very neglected. Like, the money was invested to fix it up, and now no one's taking care of it. I spoke to the 7-Eleven, and they said it's a city. And then I spoke to the Parks Department people today, and they said it's 7-Eleven. So I just think it should be taken care of so it's, we're not throwing our money away, and it's, you know, it's just nothing is done. Um, I have another question. On Sullivan Park, they started a little building over there. I don't know if it was a refreshment stand, you know, that little building. Um, I was just wondering why it was stopped, that it's not completed. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Rita Massey. Rita Massey, 349 Northeast 19th Avenue. Well, I'm back on that little park. I rode my bike there this morning, and I was appalled. From 19th Avenue to the Intracoastal, it's one block on one side of the street. There are 16 signs. There are no parking signs. There are reflector signs. There are, what is going on? Do we have excess money, or does the county do put up those signs? I, I don't understand it. You'd have to be stupid not to know that you can't park there after you see two or three signs. But all in all, there are 16 signs on one street. And I can't get a stop sign on 19th Avenue for the people that race by. We got some... some uh, Bumper things, some humps or stumps or whatever, sleeping policemen, whatever you call those things, but they're so far apart that there's a lot of raceway in between. We need one stop sign. I can't get a one stop sign, and on one street, there are 16. I'd like an explanation for that. Thank you. Next slide, Glenn Sullivan. Uh, good evening, Glenn Sullivan, 2377 Deer Creek Trail, Deerfield Beach, Florida. Uh, at the last meeting, um, at the commission meeting, I questioned two things, the significant rise in cost of the bond projects and the $4.3 million increase to pay the interest on the debt. So we were told at the commission meeting that details were provided at, the, at, that, at the, uh, the special meeting but we only saw the cost increase, and in fact, that was on the day of the workshop. That was not in the package that was on, online. What should have occurred was an explanation of how the costs grew from the original estimates. Since we, the taxpayers, will shoulder the added debt, the city staff had the opportunity at, at that workshop and should have provided the details for the growth. Yet the new estimates were presented with zero concern by the commission. There was no, no discussion. Uh, and there's talk about saving $350,000 for the refund bond of the 2006 series bonds by refinancing debt, yet we accept $6.5 million of cost growth, cost growth without a question. Also at the last commission meeting, I guess I was not clear in describing the added $4.3 million that's included in the bond. Again, this was added at the last minute and shown at that special meeting. This was not the refund of the 2006 bonds, 
that we were told, where yes, we will save approximately $350,000. What I was referring to was the recapitalization which will fund debt payments during the construction period. So we're borrowing $4.3 million to use to level debt payments early on, but that will be at a significant cost. We will, we will be told that there is no added cost to the citizens in next year's budget but this recapitalization will only mask the debt payments for a few years, but we'll have to pay that for the next 20 plus years. So that $350,000 that the commission was so proud of will be zeroed out in under two years due to the added interest we must pay for that 4.3 million. And another point, um, I've been coming to quite a few meetings. I haven't been, a, I'm not a lifelong resident, but this is the first time I've seen the Commission not allow public comments on any ordinance, especially one that adds a new tax to the citizens. I think you should have rethought that. Thank you. Next, I have Marie Edinger. Marie Edinger, 750 Southeast 6th Avenue. Proud citizen of Deerfield Beach, honored to be able to speak. I love living here. This is our slice of paradise. I had the honor of being the committee woman with the Deerfield Beach Women Club on March 11 for Pause for a Cause. This will be the fourth year that we've run this. And we have raffle baskets. And the money that we raise goes to Canaan Companions for Independence. And I want to publicly thank Baja Cafe for donating the 10% of the take of the day, the entire day, to us. For using their parking lot and being so gracious to us, allowing us, we had a band, we had some, uh, we had a, animal there that one of our handicapped ladies has, who had a little uh, kissing booth. We had some vendors, beautiful raffle baskets, wonderful ladies and men who helped run the whole affair. And I just want to thank, publicly thank the Baja one more time and invite the people to go there and spend your money there because they were gracious. Thank you. silence your phones. Anyone else from the public care to comment? Please come up one at a, let's see, somewhat one at a time. We'll go Mr. It's all right. Mr. Hers, you want to go first? Go right ahead. No, no, I'm already sitting. Let him okay. Come on. Sure. Good evening. Michael Lubin, 16 Little Harbor Way. Um, I just want to bring a point of information this past Sunday at Sullivan Park, uh, Kiwanis Club sponsored a free uh, happening uh, and fair of music at Sullivan Park. Uh, free hot dogs, free potato chips, free water, free face painting, free ice cream truck. Good humor, by the way, for uh, some of us older timers. And uh, peanuts and uh, a, a DJ. And we had all kinds of uh, children uh, from all colors and uh, areas, uh, having a great time at the splash pad and dancing to the music along with their parents, and it was a happening. There must have been at least 500 people or better, close to maybe to 1,000, hard to say, but uh, it just kept on going and going and going, and the people really enjoyed themselves. So uh, I just want to let you know, uh, Commissioner Miller was there, Commissioner Drosky was there, um, we hope to do it again. It was just a wonderful time to promote the city of Deerfield Beach, and this is just one of the many wonderful things we do at Deerfield Beach uh, through many of our organizations, and this time it was uh, Kiwanis uh, happening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now becomes the dance. Who's up next? Okay. Dan Hers, 330 Southeast 19th Avenue. The citizens of Deerfield Beach have many questions seeking answers. 
why wasn't the fact that the bond was sold with a 5% coupon interest rate, raising an additional $5.6 million for the general fund, not revealed to the citizens until 20 minutes before the bond was voted on? Now there is an extra $5.6 million that the citizens have no clue what it will be used for, and the citizens are left with annual debt service payments much higher than originally proposed by the city manager. So much for transparency. This was nothing more than a sneaky financing trick to raise much more than was ever revealed to the public. Unfortunately, the citizens are now stuck paying 5% interest on these bonds instead of the 3.85 interest rate that should have been paid. Now, if that extra $5.6 million was used for something useful, like stormwater management, I could understand that. Instead, the citizens get to hear one week before the bond special commission meeting at the stormwater utility tax workshop that the city is not in good financial shape because there is no way we can afford to take the approximately $2.4 million per year out of our general reserves to pay for this basic city service. We got to hear the commissioners tell us that we must find a dedicated funding source for stormwater. That is so interesting because in the material submitted to the citizens for the bond vote on page 16, there was a table highlighting the excess of revenue over expenditures for the city over the last three fiscal years. This in essence is the city's income statement and the city in every budget tries to have income equal expenditures. But in the last three fiscal years beginning in 2014, the city's excess revenue was eight and a half million, 7.6 million and 6.6 million for a total profit of $22.7 million. Not surprisingly, the reserve balance over these three years has risen from 7.7 .7 million to 24.6 million a $17 million increase, or 221%. How is the city's bond rating raised on February 14th, despite the fact that there was no stormwater tax revenue in place yet? But remember, the city is hurting financially and can't afford to pay for stormwater repairs from the general fund. I know four of you up there can run for re-election. And the citizens of Deerfield Beach can't wait for your yes vote in favor of the stormwater tax to appear on your voting record. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Katie Fry, Tog 418 Southeast Second Street. This is a wonderful time of year where many, many, many parents are dealing with seniors going off to college and filling out those lovely forms, those student aid forms. I just want to remind everybody that there are many local scholarships that are available. Kiwanis has scholarships available. Rotary has scholarships available. The Women's Club has scholarships available. Please remind all of your seniors, all of your parents who have seniors, to please fill out the applications and get some scholarships going. We have very few people filling out these applications, and it's kind of tough to give money away. So let's see how many parents we can get to fill out these applications with their students and give some money away locally. Thank you. Sandra Jackson, 386 Southwest 35th Avenue. And Katie, I want to get that information about the scholarship so I can get to the kids at the high school. Um, good afternoon. I'm standing here on behalf of my friend, James Benefield. And I'm a little shook a little bit, but um, I'm just concerned. I was looking at your agenda about one of the taxes you have on there where the public don't have the opportunity to speak. You can't. Can't speak on any item. Oh, I'm not speaking on it. But my question is, the public has no comments on you there. Ma'am, you can't speak on that, but I will tell you this. I plan on opening it up to the public. Okay. I just want to know, because I would like Mr. Benefit. If it smell like a skunk, I, smell like a skunk, it got to be a skunk. <laughs> Thank you. He lives on. Peggy Ross, 103. Northeast 19th Avenue. I too have a short list. One is 
Vice Mayor Gloria Battle two weeks ago at the meeting, you had mentioned the code that allowed for 1.5 cars. I think that is totally unrealistic. In a one-bedroom apartment now, you're going to have two drivers. In a two-bedroom apartment, you could have three or four because now teenagers have cars and drive. And you have, I live on the island, and parking on the street is not really terribly realistic. So I do think I agree that should be readdressed. My other is you're with discussing the ride share which I think the ride share is probably a really good idea, but I think you have to do a lot of research because if anybody has been over the bridge to the island recently, the um, bikes will knock the pedestrians over going over on the sidewalk. They do not walk those bikes. They ride them. Uh, the sign that says walk your bikes over, if I go like this, the sign starts a foot above my head, so it's way above what anybody can kind of see. They ride on the wrong side of the street, and the signs are only on if you're following the traffic, not if you're going against the traffic. If they ride out on the road where you put the nice thing a couple years ago over the bridge, it ties up a whole lane of traffic. So during the weekend or busy times, you now have pretty much one lane of traffic, going over the bridge if the bicyclists, which they don't, use that. So I think that you really need to give that some thought, especially if you're doing this to encourage people to ride their bikes to the beach because you're going to have terrible problems and accidents going over that bridge. And if I'm allowed to answer one question from a lady over here, because I live across from you're Sullivan gonna, Park. You're going to have to address the commission. Oh, so the little, the little. Pretend it's an information. Okay, for the little shack. They actually are working on it. Like they had a crane there this week, and they put a floating thing. But the real builder, which is R E E L. I think spends a lot of time fishing because it's the slowest project I have ever seen. <laughs> Coming from New York, they would have had that done in a week. <laughs> so, okay. Thank you. For the record, that's not a government job, believe it or not. <laughs> anyone else in the public care to comment? Not seeing anyone? Not oh, 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 oh. I'm moving. Not, not Thank fast. Take your time. Yeah, Amy. But uh, Amy K. Canner, 111 Southeast Fifth Avenue. Otis Tanner Way, Deerfield Beach, Florida. Uh, oops. Uh, I just want to share a little bit about the passage of time. Uh, I have lived on or about on Southeast Fifth Avenue and Hillsborough Boulevard for uh, 70 years. And uh, many of those years, uh, I was driving. We started driving earlier, and I had a paper route, so I got sort of I got to drive the car early, and I have been able to pull out of Hillsborough Boulevard and go straight over to Pioneer Park, turn left and come to the City Hall, go right and go to the Women's Club. But now, as of um, one day last week, I was traveling west. And I realized, I know we've been talking about it for a long time, about all of the um, F dot remodeling of Hillsborough Boulevard. Which I'm really not sure that was such a good idea. But anyway, it's done. But now I cannot turn onto Southeast Fifth Avenue going west. I can only come out of Southeast Fifth Avenue and go east to get there, to get to my house, I have to go down either 6th Avenue, or I, I, I assume that we will still continue to go out at 4th Avenue. But if I can't turn there, that means, uh, God hope I never need the emergency vehicle, which I have once or twice. They, won't, they have to go a roundabout way. So it's just the passage of time. Uh, if you've lived here in Deerfield as long as I have, or if you came to Deerfield a year ago, you've seen changes because there's things changing every day. And this is a big change. I look forward to seeing what what is added to that empty space now between the two lanes of traffic. If we're going to put um, landscaping, 
if we're going to keep it up if we put it? Are we going to have trees? Um, I know we talked about a lot of things, but I haven't heard or seen anything now. So I just wanted to share my passage of time with everybody. So I thank you, and I thank you for the privilege of being able to chatter about inane stuff that is important to me. Or, you know, we all have stuff that's important to us, and we just feel a little better if maybe we can say it. And I would like to say that tomorrow we have history at high noon in this office, and our vice mayor is going to come and share a little bit about her history in Deerfield. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Not seeing anyone, I'm going to close the public to be heard. Just a couple of points on this. I'll just try to answer some of the questions that we have. Um, the, as far as the roofs and the sandbags, if you remember a few uh, meetings ago, we brought up the point about how many citizens are struggling with their insurance company, much as the city was struggling with their insurance companies to be reimbursed for some of the issues that we had during the hurricane. We asked for an extension so they can work through some of these problems. I believe the date that we gave was till August on that. But, um, and we did, we did that as a courtesy based on public request because they were struggling with their insurance companies. So when code enforcement started citing these, these uh, residents, um, they were kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. So that's why we uh, moved forward with doing that, to give a little bit of a, a kind of a wait period on that. So, so that's why that occurred. As far as the beautification, I'm, we'll find out who is responsible for that. If it's the city side, certainly we need to be making sure that we're doing uh, beautification. I believe, well, I don't know this for a fact, that the code enforcement is addressing some of these issues that were brought up. There's, po there's a process with code enforcement. You're not necessarily, some people that when they get cited, they'll take care of it immediately. Others do not. So uh, there is a process, but we'll find out and make sure that at least that process has started in those situations. I think we got an answer as to what's going on with the little building. Apparently the fishing's good over there, so it's been a little bit slow. That might have been why. Um, regarding the 16 signs, I don't know exactly what all the different signs are over there, but we can uh, definitely meet with the resident to talk about that find out what the issue is. And as many of you know, putting in stop signs is not as easy as it sounds. We have to go through the county. Um, even if we try to sneak in and put it in ourselves, they <laughs> immediately remove it. They don't uh, reflect well on that. Um, one of the points that was made was, re was referencing capitalized interest. Um, and, and this was discussed at the meeting, much as and maybe not as in-depth as some people like. There was some explanation as, for, as <laughs> to why costs went up. And again, with these rough estimates, that's why <laughs> and, and it was explained, probably not to the depth some people want, but I do feel it was explained. Um, the capitalized interest reference, the sources and uses of funds section of the bond documents, represents the funds that will be used to pay a portion of the interest on the bonds during the period of construction. Uh, the primary aim is this, to minimize the impact uh, on the existing non ad valorem revenue um, until the facilities are constructed. Basically, we're going to be losing revenue while these things are being refurbished. So because of that, in order to offset that cost that's going to happen to the city, there are programmings that people pay for, rentals, that sort of thing. Um, the primary aim of this is to minimize that impact on us and be able to generate income that will help offset the debt service on the bonds. And to give you an example, the debt service on the bonds for uh, fiscal year 2019 would have been $1.5 million more based on today's interest rates. This is going to help level out the debt service payments on the bonds until all the facilities are online and all have at least the, the amount of impact, minimize the amount of impact on the citizens themselves. Um, I will say this, it is bad policy to start rating the reserves. For people that are new to the city or just decided to move to the city, but have been coming to meetings for a long time, they will know the chant from the crowd that has attended these meetings, and it's funny because we're being told that we are tone deaf to the citizens, which is an absolute falsehood. We are taking the lead and we're taking the, the driving directions from the citizenry two or three years ago who said you need to increase your reserves. Now, as soon as we've increased the reserves, people want us to rate it so they can save a couple hundred bucks a year. It doesn't make sense to me. It's not good fiscal policy. It's amazing that people that come from cities that have very rich reserves can come into ours and tell us that we should lower ours. It's not the way we should go about things. 
I disagree with the policy. I respect their opinion. They feel we should rate it. But they know, because they were sitting in this audience two, three years ago, know that that's what the citizens wanted us to do. We did that. It's amazing when you can increase your reserves, pull yourself out of the debt that we were in and that we got into when the economy collapsed and be criticized years later for having healthy reserves. There are things that come up with stormwater maintenance that will have to be addressed. And these are major projects. This isn't small, regular, day-to-day -day maintenance. These are major projects that come up. So to think that we're going to raid our reserves, I will go back again, and I say this before because I lived through it in the city and I've seen it. $14 million got pulled out of the reserve. That's what it cost the city of Deerfield Beach when Wilma hit. That was a Cat 2. I believe that was a Cat 2. Cat 2. I think it was heading towards this instead of 4, but it got it instead of 2. $14 million. Now let's take out $14 million of this reserves that people think that we're, we have too much in. Let's take $14 million out. Then let's go ahead and take another, let's say, $5 million to work on stormwater. Where does that leave our reserves? I guarantee you those same people that are asking us to bleed our reserves right now are going to be asking us, why did you let it get so low? I disagree with the policy. That's all it is. It's very simple. I have a disagreement with that policy. And we've done it. I've sat up here as a commissioner. Commissioner Miller, we've seen it. We've tried that approach. It's not a wise approach. I don't agree with it. So um, regarding that, um, as far as the Women's Club, excellent event, and I heard very good things about it in Qantas, an excellent event on your family, uh, on the Family Fun Day. Um, the issues with, uh, with um, the rideshare program, you're right, a lot of homework needs to be done on that. There are more ripples to that, and we will definitely look into the bike sign, so thank you for that information. And, Mr. and uh, Regarding the issues with Hillsboro, we will talk to you later regarding some of those. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The next section of the agenda is agreements and expenditure requests. This is agenda items four through eight, pursuant to the Commission's uh, rules of procedure for these meetings. The Commission does have the option to uh, approve these items as a grouping or approve them individually. Uh, if you approve them as a grouping, it would be subject to an offer to the public. Uh, to participate uh, and give their comment. Is there any items that want to be pulled for items four through eight? Not seeing any. anyone from the public care to comment on any item on number four and eight? Show of hands. Okay, no problem. So let's go ahead and uh, tackle them uh, individually then, uh, if we could. Item number four. Item number four is a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, approving an amendment to contract number JZ11706-2018 between the Area-Wide Council on Aging of Broward County, Inc. and the City of Deerfield Beach slash Northeast Focal Point Senior Center for the provision of Alzheimer's daycare services, providing for execution, severability, and an effective date. Anyone from the public care to comment on this item? Not seeing anyone. Uh, commission, do you have any comments on this item? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Uh, the next item is agenda item number five, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, approving the award of a contract to Playmore West, Inc., doing business as Playmore Recreational Products and Services for the supply, installation, and refurbishment of playground equi equipment at Johnny McKeithen Park, pursuant to request for proposal number 2017-18-12, providing for execution, severability, and effective date. Anyone from the public care to comment on this item? Not seeing anyone, I'm going to close the public to be heard. Commission comments? Commissioner Parnes? I move to accept the proposal as written. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Passes unanimously. The next step. Next item is agenda item number six, resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, approving the award of a contract to JMS Construction Services, Inc. for an amount of $56,992.50, pursuant to invitation to bid number 2017-18-05, Natura Boulevard sidewalk installation, providing for contract execution, severability, and an effective date. Anyone from the public care to comment on this item? Not seeing anyone, I'm going to close the public to be heard. I make a motion to approve. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. 
Passes unanimously. Next item, agenda item number seven, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, approving the award of ITD number 2017-18-13 for solid waste disposal services to Progressive Waste Solutions of Florida, Inc., doing business as Waste Connections of Florida, authorizing execution of a contract with Waste Connections of Florida for a five-year term with two three-year renewal options, providing an effective date. Anyone from the public care to comment on this item? Big ticket item, I would hope so. Dan Hurst, 330 Southeast 19th Avenue. Um, actually, the first part is very positive. This is uh, one of the times where we're actually saving money on a contract, so that I'd like to congratulate the people who are in charge of that. My question is more of an informational one, so the citizens can understand the role in, in this contract of the company who did the consulting work, uh, Kessler Consulting. I'm just curious in, about the process, because obviously uh, Mr. Greasack and Mr. Good are excellent department heads. So I wonder what Kessler Consulting specifically brought to the table here, and um, uh, and what type of expertise did they bring that that uh, that uh, the employees uh, that we have were not able to do? And um, what did uh, Kessler charge the city for the work performed on this contract? Or if they are on an annual retainer, what is that amount? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public Anyone care to comment on this item? Sandy Jackson, 386 Southwest 35th Avenue. I just want to understand what you guys are approving, making sure is, are they going to be taking over solid waste? That's my question. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Not seeing anyone from the public coming forward? Commission? Right, can we get some of these questions answered, actually, regarding? Yes, unfortunately, Mr. Gressick could not be here tonight, but I do have the assistant director, Mr. David Everland, who is prepared to speak and he'll answer those questions. The mic's questions. not on. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. Dave Everland, assistant director of sustainable management. The, the questions he specifically asked on Kessler and how they're paid, I'm not familiar off the top of my head. I'll have to get that information for us. Okay. And then <clears throat> they were they were guiding uh, for specs on the on the bid itself and, and instrumental in putting that together. Okay. Sure. Assistant City Attorney. As to the second question to the woman who asked what exactly we're doing today, the item before the commission is a vote to award the dis a disposal contract for the disposal of the city's solid waste, bulk waste, and commercial and demolition debris. Um, the city does its own hauling and collection, um, so this is for the disposal piece of the waste stream process. Thank you. Can we want more? City, city manager? No, he addressed it. Okay, no problem. And just for clarification, that does not mean we're getting rid of any of our sanitation employees. It's just a matter of where the garbage is going. Got a new place to go. Absolutely. Um, I do have a question for you, Mr. Everlin. Uh, one of the things that concerns me, and I think residents probably need to be more aware of this, and really everybody in the country needs to be aware of this, the recycling that we do on a regular basis, and we have the one, one bin recycling that we have, Recycling is actually right now a losing venture. Is that correct? It's um, beginning to get tough. Okay. And uh, there's there's more to come on that issue. We're we're looking at what our opportunities and, and options are. Okay. Thank you. Um, commission comments. I'm ready to make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, we have roll call, please. Commissioner Droski? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Parnas? Yes. Vice Mayor Battle? Yes. Mayor Gantz? Yes. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Right, the next item is item number eight, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, approving an interlocal agreement with Broward County, Florida for the use of temporary debris management sites. Providing for execution, severability, and effectiveness. 
Anyone from the public care to comment on this item? Not seeing anyone coming forward and close the public to be heard. I'd like to make a motion to approve. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Not seeing anyone, approves 5 0. Departmental business? Yes. The next item is item number nine. This is uh, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, amending Chapter 70 Utilities of the Deerfield Beach City Code by creating Article 6. Uh, stormwater management, creating a stormwater management utility and stormwater management utility fund, providing for adoption of a stormwater management utility fees by resolution, providing for inclusion in the code of ordinances, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. This is first reading. Thank you. Um, before we do that, I did say, as I said earlier, uh, I, I'm, this, I don't know why this isn't put on for public, uh, for the public to be heard. But I would, with the commission's permission, like to open it up to the public. I see that's a unanimous uh, on that. So we're going to open. We will open this up to the public. Also, for clarification, um, a point that was made out there. I saw somebody had brought it to my attention that there's there's language in here that references the ability to to <coughs> go into. Uh, and we have our revision on that, Anthony. Yes, we do, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I requested a revision on it because there is a portion in here that, that talks about the ability for the city to do an inspection and to go on the premises. People took that as thinking that you could come in their house at any time and actually be able to go in there. Anybody knows anything about stormwater? Stormwater doesn't affect the inside of your residence. Nothing that goes in the pipes inside your house. It, it's it, stormwater doesn't deal with the inside of your home. So. Just for clarity, that, that has to deal with if you have a facility or an area in which you have a drain or something like that on commercial property. And actually, and I'll let you explain it a little uh, better if you could. Yeah, sure. Um, and w what we did was just to, to nip this issue in the bud uh, at the direction of the mayor, we did revise the ordinance prior to first reading tonight. And so the revised version that's before the commission adds the following language to the inspection section, and it specifically states that uh, it excludes the interior of residential units. Uh, because my understanding is most of these structures and utilities uh, and systems, as the mayor mentioned, are on the exterior. And we did confer with staff and confirm that there's really no need to uh, you know, go into the residence, uh, and certainly not without uh, you know, resident consent uh, for these purposes, for stormwater purposes. That addresses your yes. Your thank you. Here. Sure. Okay, city manager, do you have a presentation or comments on this? No, I believe the presentation was provided during the public workshop. Unless the city commission would like to have Mr. Good do a quick uh, synopsis, otherwise we're ready to answer questions. Thank you. Uh, for the sake of those who may not have been here uh, for that presentation, if we could have Mr. Good come up and give a overview with the commission's permission is that all right okay. what a wonderful good evening mayor commission Thomas good environmental services director so I um, I don't have uh, the, the uh, presentation available tonight because it did take me about nearly hour and a half last time to go through this so if you would like I would like to just to quickly speak through the, the highlights of the presentation so primarily we just talked a little bit about what the purpose of the stormwater management um, is for. And so we certainly know it's for flood protection. We talked a lot about resiliency, which is, you know, sea level rise, climate change, things of that nature. And of course, water quality, and a lot of that is driven by our uh, regulatory authorities in terms of uh, the quality of the surface water and, of course, our groundwater in which we get our water supply from. But uh, the bottom line was that we needed to start thinking differently and begin adopting and adapting to a changing environment. So we wanted to uh, create a stormwater utility um, that would address these things. So the primary things that we were looking to fund is, is that we have to do planning now and we have to do design. We have long range goals, we have short range, need, short range needs. Um, we want to do uh, some construction and repairs. And we have some old systems that need to be retrofitted. 
Uh, we also have a large component, which is the operations and maintenance, and that's mostly to deal with a lot of our water quality and make sure that our systems are operating in accordance with regulatory requirements. And so we were looking for adequate resources that lead us to what we consider a comprehensive approach to stormwater management. So we introduced what is a stormwater utility. A stormwater utility is a standalone utility, and it's usually set up as an enterprise fund. And it, and utility can be designed to offer a wide range of services. It is financially and organizationally self-sufficient. Any funds that go into the stormwater utility is expressly reserved for stormwater management activity. So what is the benefit we had talked about to the users? Well, the benefit is, is that we know that it clearly improves the uh, public health, safety, and the general welfare of the community. There's an equitable charge for service. The cost of services are easy to follow. It's all in one place. It's just like your water and sewer utility. That's how you uh, set the budget, and that's how you track the cost. And the most important thing was to preserve the community value. City staff was recommending that you approve this stormwater utility. Thank you. Thank you. Commission comments before I open it to the public? Not seeing any, I'm going to open it to the public. Thank you, Mr. Mueller. Thank you. I just want to say something quick. Hi, Sandra Jackson, 386 Southwest 35th Avenue. Um, with the storm water, he just made a statement that it's supposed to help with the flooding. My question is, for my insurance on my property, okay, are we going to get a discount uh, if we do have flooding? Because some people do have to carry flooding on their insurance, so how would that work? Thank you. We're going to answer that question for you. Anyone else in the public? Glenn Sullivan, 2377 Deer Creek Trail, Deerfield Beach, Florida. Uh, I didn't spend as much time on this because I didn't think I had a chance to uh, talk to it. So I may have other questions at the next reading. But a um, couple, of, couple of questions, I guess. Uh, we know that um, stormwater has been, has been done with the road and bridge or street maintenance. And I'm just wondering if at the next meeting we can have uh, an approximate ex expectation on how the next year's budget will will go down based on the redundancy between the two departments that there is current currently. Um, also, uh, I'm wondering: is there going to be impacts on um, things like uh, people washing their cars, the kind of chemicals they use to wash cars, uh, roofs? Some companies use various chemicals for roofs. Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't see anything in there about um, uh, the type of chemicals that can be used or will be discontinued, but it would be interesting to find out if that's going to be something that we're faced with down the line. And one other thing that I'd like to call your attention to, um, at the end of the, uh, the, the copy online uh, is the Hazen and Sawyer um, uh, study. And I think it's the last page, the last line, right after the five-year plan, uh, they're clear that uh, the reserves in the F5 go down to the point where they believe uh, additional costs or additional fees will be required to sustain this. So um, just so everyone knows what to expect, the company you hired expects fee increases at least in five years. Dan Hurst, 330 Southeast 19th Avenue. Uh, Mayor, I want to thank you for opening up to the public and letting us speak. But the bigger question on that one point is why was it put into the agenda that the public was not going to be able to speak? I knew a lot of people who wanted to come and speak on this issue. But when they found out they'd have to wait for the second reading to talk, they didn't show up. I would like a specific answer since the city manager is ultimately responsible for putting out the agenda. Why did he specifically 
write it in the method that he did. And part of the problem, this is a perfect example of why there's such mistrust in the city about the operations that go on at the highest levels. It doesn't make any sense. And the citizens deserve an explanation and a direct answer to that question from the city manager. Now, it's tough when you have to speak extemporaneously off the top of your head because I pride myself on trying to get as much information into the three minutes that I'm allowed as possible. So off the cuff, I'll try to get as much stuff that I wanted to talk about two weeks from now or a month from now and talk about it now. The, the mayor just mentioned that there are major projects that need to be done on stormwater. And I'm sure that may be correct. But one of the frustrations to the citizens are we can't get the information of what those projects are. I want to read to you from the Environmental Services Budget Workshop meeting dated June 27, 2017, under Environmental Services. Mr. Hansen said, there is not a lot of documentation identifying the age of the infrastructure as well as where stormwater infrastructure is located. Then later on, in response to Commissioner Battle's question, Mr. Good replied that a third party consultant is requested in the city manager's policy considerations to help identify the city's unknown infrastructure. Now, if this isn't an example of the cart before the horse, I don't know what is. How can you put this huge new uh, 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 overhead in place when you can't even identify what the projects are? If you had identified the projects, it would have made a little bit more sense to the citizens. Now, the other thing is that it's fascinating to me the timing between the bond and the stormwater tax workshop because at the stormwater tax workshop we've got the the it's like a tale of two cities we got the uh, financial information that said boy we can't afford to take this out of our general reserves uh, I'll can to be continued would you like an additional minute I would love an additional minute thank you so at the, at the uh, workshop because it can't take the money out of the, out of the uh, general reserves. But then one week later, we have the bond uh, hearing, a meeting, and we hear about the strong financial strength of the city. We hear that the bond rating had just been improved uh, February 14th. We also hear about the debt service coverage, which being an ex-banker, we have a, a wonderful debt service coverage and very strong cash flow. So you can't have it both ways. You can't be crying one week and then the next week later how wonderful and strong the city is. It doesn't make sense. Depending on your audience, is that what you're doing? You're adjusting the information to the audience? doesn't make any sense. And regarding whether to take money out of the general reserves, this is a philosophical difference. This, this is not 12, uh, seven years ago when we were in a recession. This is now when the city has the highest general reserves in history. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Katie Fry Talk, 418 Southeast Second Street. I unfortunately was not available to make it to that one um, workshop. I would like to maybe suggest in the next, in the future, when we do have big projects like this, that we do have more than one workshop, so that people do have a chance to review the information that's been given to them at that workshop, and then come back and discuss it before it has to actually come before the commission to be voted on. Um, I also had questions as to as Mr. Glenn and uh, Ms. Sandra said, where, where are we going to see any cost savings? Are we going to be taxed on this tax, like we do the utility tax, our water and stuff like that? Are we going to get a tax on this tax tax? Are we going to see a decrease in our millage rate because we will be having, we'll be getting a tax separated from the general fund of the stormwater, the current stormwater um, repairs will not be coming out of the bridge and road fund, they'll be coming out of their own fund. So will we see a difference in our, um, our uh, taxes, our home property taxes? Um, in regards to projects, 
if you don't think we have stormwater issues, walk outside your street. I, as well as Commissioner Miller, are not able, Commissioner Miller can't get out of his church. I can't get to my house because of the stormwater issues that we have in our neighborhoods. There are flooding all throughout Deerfield in various, various different areas. One of the major things that people don't realize is we do, we have grown as a city. What the infrastructure was 25, 30 years ago is not the same requirements for the people that live here now. We had houses where there were 10 families living on one block. Now we have houses where there are 25 and 30 families living on one block. That puts a major amount of stress on the infrastructure and that is where we need to address our issues now before we have any further building, before we have any, we do not want to have sinkholes like everybody else. So let's get everything fixed now. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Not seeing anybody coming forward, we'll close the public to be heard. Commission comments? Uh, I don't see any lights coming up, but I'll, I'm gonna go real quick on a couple of these things. We did have a workshop. We had a public, a public workshop. This is not a surprise. This is not that we haven't had ample time to have discussions on this and, and to come forward. This has been talked about for quite a long time. It's been talked about for a couple years, actually, believe it or not. And, and people have come forward on it. The people, we had a public workshop, 14 people spoke. More people were there, but they choose to listen, they didn't speak. We even opened up again for the same people to come back and redress, in which I think we had four people come back with more questions. So uh, we certainly have given people the opportunity to discuss and to go over this and to review some of this documentation. So, um, and, and I think tonight, quite frankly, I think it's right to have people be able to come out and hear, and they, they're gonna have another opportunity to come out to talk about this. Um, so, you know, what, for, for the people that were not at that meeting and didn't get the full presentation or, or didn't hear the debate going back and forth, a lot of the things we talked about there was uh, the stormwater uh, budgets for other cities compared to ours. And the truth of the matter is, it's not unusual for cities in South Florida to not know where, as old as these cities are, to not know where some of these stormwater things are going. If you've ever tried to go back to the 1970s and look at plans for any city in South Florida and try to, if they've even survived, you're looking at faded blueprints at best. You might be lucky to get them on microfilm. You guys remember that? So, um, and I've seen it. I serve on the Broward County Planning Council. I've been up here a long time. I've seen it come forward where we have tried to go back and find old plans that are just non-existent. So that's not unusual. It's unfortunate, but it's not unusual. What a lot of people don't know is it wasn't that long ago, there are places in Fort Lauderdale on the barrier island and with their sewage, you know what it consisted of? The pipe going directly into the intercoastal. Not mapped, not marked, that's what it was. So, um, you know, there are a lot of things out there that are unfortunate mysteries. We learned that, this city did, when they redid Hillsborough Boulevard with just the utility issues that we had with uncovering FPNL problems that I believe were part of that, that delayed that project and had that drag on. So, you know, there is obviously a need to do some infrastructure work. How are you gonna pay for it? You can pay for it out of your general fund, which to me doesn't seem to make sense. One of the pluses that we had about this is it gives us the ability with a stormwater fee it gives us the ability to go out and take loans out to be able to pay for large scale projects. So if you have something that's costing you five or $10 million in a city like ours, you're not wiping out your general fund to take care of some major, um, major maintenance that you have to do on any of these projects. I will say this, I, I understand the point of, well, what exactly are we going after? Why are we taking this money to go after projects that we're not exactly sure clearly what these projects are? Um, I think that's a good point. It, it is one of the reasons that for me, I'm a little concerned with going for the full amount right now, which I'd much rather do, is establish it, um, have, a, have a lower rate that we have right now to at least get a study done so we can figure out what we are facing. The one good thing about having this type of a fund and program is that money is specifically for these types of infrastructure projects. 
we cannot continue to raise our, raid our road and bridge fund like we've been doing um, in order to tackle some of these projects. I think for the public, what's good about that is you're going to be able to specifically see where that money's going and what projects it's going to. But again, the problem is right now, we're not sure what those projects are. So we need to get the ball rolling. Um, I also do feel that we have certain areas of the city that are private, have private stormwater type of uh, facilities within their own streets. They all connect into ours because it all connects. I, I, I know we have discounted rates for some of the different types of uh, buildings and facilities that are out there. I think we need to look at some sort of discounted rate for those that when it comes to their, you know, their own stormwater that they have within their community, it's privately owned, that they either get a discount or the city says, if you're going to pay, just like everybody else is into this fund, the city will uh, pay for your major infrastructure repairs if it occurs within that area. One of the two. They need to get some sort of a break. It's not fair for them to be take a double hit on that. Um, I do think they need to pay something because as what was pointed out at the meeting that we had is that there are people that pay for school taxes to our school board and they don't have any kids in the school system. So, you know, that happens, that occurs, it's for the greater good of the community and that's what we need to do. There are flooding issues in the city that need to be addressed. Um, but I, I don't want to see us going with creating a giant uh, department to start tackling this until we know what the projects are. So I'm a little more hesitant to go with the full amount that's what's been presented. I'd rather start a little bit smaller, identify where we need to go, and then move forward. Um, I'm not sure who went first, but I'm going to go Vice Mayor Battle and Commissioner Drosky. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I want folks to know that, uh, um, and I guess I'm going to ask our attorney to explain this because this is not a tax. I hear, hear some people saying the, the, the utility tax or whatever. This is not a tax. This is a fee, a utility fee. And if, uh, Anthony, if you would explain the difference between the two, please. Uh, thank you, Ms. Vice Mayor. I'll do my best to explain the difference between a tax and a fee without boring the crowd too much. Uh, and I understand that there's some sentiment any time somebody raises a fee or proposes a new fee that there's a tendency to call it a tax. Under the law, as dictated by the Florida Supreme Court, they treat it a little differently. One of the key distinctions generally is a tax, like when you pay your ad valorem taxes, for example, it comes into the general fund. It's not really restricted for its use so long as it goes to a public purpose, and then the commission allocates it as part of your budget process. Uh, the difference with this type of arrangement is it's more of a regular, what's considered a regulatory fee, uh, similar to the discussion that the commission had uh, probably about a month or so ago when we talked about building permit fees, the law actually requires when these revenues to come in, come in that they have to be spent on stormwater for stormwater purposes and stormwater expenditures. So the actual expenditure is restricted uh, in that case. So that's the distinction that the Florida Supreme Court makes uh, between uh, you know, a general tax and a regulatory fee such as a stormwater fee. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Soroka. Um, I, I, I sat and I watched a project uh, that the city started to do. It started with one house in my district, and it ended up being three houses that they had to go into underground. I think initially we paid uh, out about $10,000, uh, and, and Mr. Manager, you can correct me if I'm wrong. And in the end, we found out once we got in there, we couldn't do the work that needed to be done, so we had to farm it out. And once we farmed it out, it cost us almost $100,000 just to get those homeowners uh, to a, a, a point where they could use the street or even back out of their yards because the pipes underneath had, had just gone. And if you don't think that there are projects that need to be done, the next time there's a slight rain, go down on 48th Street you won't be able to get from uh, your by car from <coughs> Dixie Highway all the way out to 3rd Street. And there are other areas I can't even get out of my own community when we have a rain a rainstorm one way or the other. So certainly the need is there and I'm glad Mrs. Soroka that you pointed out the difference between a fee and a tax. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Drosky. Uh Thank you uh, Mr. Mayor. I. I, uh, I probably feel like Gilligan right now, or my 
or the vice mayor because I'm going to be the lone no vote tonight, so I feel like I'm on the island up here. Uh, but for something as monumental and as important as this, I have to be 100% convinced, and I'm, I'm just not 100% convinced. So that's, that's going to be the basis for my vote. But, but going forward, I want to thank you know, the, the city manager for this bold idea. I mean, we're, it's a new commission, it's a new day, and I like these ideas, and I like debating this, and I like taking it to the public. This has been extremely uh, debated in our city. We had a presentation, remember Stormy, the stormwater girl? We had a video presentation with her first. Uh, I actually had a District 4 town hall meeting uh, that's focused on the stormwater presentation. We had the public workshop. We have the first reading tonight. We'll have a second reading. And I have been out on the road since January going meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting talking about this particular issue. So this has been debated actually ad nauseum and anyone that hasn't had the opportunity to put their two cents in, I don't know where you've been because this has been discussed at length along the way. So please continue to bring these meetings or these ideas up so we can debate them for the good of our city. Uh, I, I like the direction that we're going in here in the, in the city of Deerfield Beach. And to Mr. Good sitting back there, you put countless hours into this particular project. So this is nothing against you. You put a wonderful presentation and made all the points together. Uh, you actually came to my District 4 town hall meeting and made the presentation. Um, you, actually, when I've been double booked or been able to attend meetings, you've actually been my stand-in speaker. So I appreciate you getting the word out there as well. So this is really a good opportunity. This is debate at its finest here in Deerfield Beach. We don't always agree, and I'm on the island tonight, and someone will be at the next meeting, but um, I, I think that's the, you know, it's, it's, it's good to have debate, uh, cordial debate here in the city of Deerfield Beach. Thank you. Commissioner Miller? Yes, um, I wrote down seven points. Um, I'm gonna try to get Commissioner Drosky off the island. <laughs> Back with the, the other folks. Um, number one, we've got an aging city. There's no question. The fact that we don't know all of our system underground, that was illustrated when we improved the Cove uh, parking lot. There's many things we don't know about in, in Hillsborough Boulevard. So part of this money initially is going to go for a study. So necessary. Doesn't, the question is not do we need to do this. It's just a matter of where the money is going to come from. We absolutely have to do this. As a matter of fact, we, every one of us knows where there's cases where you can't even get out of your house and or which is making our real estate values lower as they will grow as the places become more habitable when we have better stormwater coverage. I've had people in very expensive houses flooded unbelievably and how they complained was on a lot. But let me go. Number one, I said, so we got an aging city, very old drainage system. Of course we need to do it. The question is not... We, where's the money? It's just about where's the money going to come from. Number two, it's just a matter of the source of funds. This source of funds is totally transparent. It shows exactly where the money goes. It doesn't say, oh, we do this, we can't build a park. No, this is dedicated to flood control. Absolutely necessary, absolutely transparent. And in fact, as we do this, there's a distinct possibility we will be able to uh, um, uh, lower our millage rate because we've shown we've diversified our income. One of the reasons our credit rating has gone up is because we've got more than one source of income. We've had source of income. We had Avalorum taxes and our certain fees for buildings and such like that. When we put the utility uh, fees in, that was a, a, a diversifying our income. Now we're going to diversify some more. I think we're going to go up a notch or two on our credit rating, which will make more money less expensive in the future if we need to borrow any. But the fact is, we're going to spend it. I want it in a fund that's totally transferable, transparent and uh, um, accountable. Uh, three, uh, at least, all right, transparency. Number four, um, as the city uh, financing uh, rating has gone up because of we've diversified. Okay, I just hit that already. Oh, high reserve account. I've had complaints about the high reserve account. We talked about one hurricane costing 14, and that was a category one or two. What if we got two of them in any given season? And one was, like one was threatened this last year. If it hit, like it could have hit, like it hit the other coast. It's not too high at all. We'd be irresponsible if we let it dip. 
when we have the ability so it doesn't dip. We like to, we need this other stream so we can take care of our, our, our flooding conditions. And as our population has grown, it's almost getting maxed out. We want this to be a livable city and we want to have our prices of our real estate to increase, not decrease because of flooded conditions. Um, uh, do, 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 improve property value, it's revenue, revenue neutral. This is total transparent and it's totally revenue neutral, as you explained. This can only be spent on uh, these designated projects. And we're gonna prioritize the projects ahead first, not necessarily in one, two, or three, four. The highest needs, they'll get first. But I mean, I, this, is, this is wisdom. Diversifying our income stream, it has to be done, so put it on the side and maybe, ultimately, we would make a couple of our friends in the audience very happy, maybe we could have a lower millage rate in the future because we've done this. Yeah. That's why I'm gonna be voting yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve this. We have a couple more speakers, if you don't mind, uh, Commissioner <laughs> Miller, but I think we know where you're going. <laughs> Commissioner Parnas? Yes. Is there anybody out here who thinks our infrastructure is getting younger? Let me know. Infrastructure is what the city lives on. Sewers, clean water, stopping flooding, etc. I believe in sea rise. I believe in climate change. And we live on the water. Think about that. If we don't repair our infrastructure and bring it into the 21st century, we could have a storm that could wipe out half this city. Where would the money come from to rebuild it? So we've got to take care of things up front. You can't rob the bridge and road fund because that fund is there for bridges and roads. If you keep borrowing from it, when we do need roads and bridges, there's no money there. We need stormwater repair to survive. Otherwise, we're faced with serious flooding. I live in Sentry Village. We have flooding. Right after a rain, trying to get out of the village can be extremely difficult because of the flooding. Other areas in District 2 and District 4 and District 1 also have flooding. I've seen our canals go up onto the lawns. I've also seen the dry se uh, season in a few years where they went down to pure dirt, no water at all. But when we have a lot of rain, there's damage. Now, either we like this city enough to save it or let it go underwater. That's the real choice here. You don't believe it? It's not going to happen to me. You're dreaming, because it will, and it has. How many people out here have seen flooding in the, you know, in the city when there's heavy rain? Raise your hand. You, okay, and you, and you. Well, do you want to live with it, or do you want to fix it? If we fix it, it costs money. And we gotta stop borrowing from other funds because we set up those funds over the years to fix specific problems. And so this becomes necessary. I'm gonna vote yes, I'm not happy about it. And I'd like to see in the future, since we're not taking out of the general fund, or the bridge fund, or the road fund, that we can lower taxes. This is a fee to repair what's necessary not some pie in the sky, we're gonna have super free bus service to the beach from every part of the city. That's pie in the sky. This is a necessity, and I will, Joe, if you wanna make the motion, please.
please do. Before we if do, the manager would let me. Yes. City manager? Yes, thank oh, you. I meant the manager, I meant the mayor. Yeah. Your boss. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor Battle. Congratulations, commissioners, general public. First of all, let me start by this. this the city of Deerfield Beach, whether you like it or not, I like it, staff likes it, or anyone in the audience or at home that will watch this uh, commission meeting over the coming weeks or at the second reading, you have to face the facts. This city has been behind the eight ball on your revenue sources and on these types of, of projects. And, and it very much does correlate with the millage rate. Cities back in the 80s and 90s certainly adopted both a public service tax, which is a utility tax, which we adopted about five or six years ago in the city. And that did have a direct correlation, and thus we were able to do a, a millage reduction with this. They also, many cities, I think it's 22 out of the 31, have approved some form of stormwater fee at varying rates. We just now are doing this. So a lot of these cities with lower millage rates and with better infrastructure, the reason being is they've had these type of revenue sources and enterprise funds to do this. I want to make sure it's clear for the city commission that this stormwater utility enterprise fund is not the same thing as a public service tax. It doesn't go hand in hand with putting money in the general fund like the public service tax did where you could lower the millage rate. And not every year do we fund the uh, road and bridge fund with the general fund dollars. <coughs> Whenever we do certain projects that we've done in the past like the dredging of the Kingfisher Canal we certainly appropriated monies in the general fund and transferred them via the city commission um, into, the, into that uh, road and bridge fund to do that type of project. But we don't do that every year. It's dictated by priorities and by funding uh, constraints within the city. You know, we've made it abundantly clear to the credit rating agencies that this is something that we were going to be uh, evaluating and bringing forward to the city commission for approval um, with no certainty of whether or not it gets passed. If you recall, we were actually going to bring this forward about 18 months ago. And the reason why we stopped is because Broward County began talks with the municipalities about the gas tax and the infrastructure tax. So we said, well, let's hold off and see what the voters do with that. And it's clear where that went. So now we're here bringing this back. There's no correlation with the bond issue. This is just bringing the city forward as quickly as possible. And this is the priorities that the city commission has outlined within the strategic plan. And while it might not say specifically stormwater, there's certainly infrastructure and other quality of life and business um, matters that you did cover in the strategic plan. And this is a tool and resource for the city commission to achieve that. Um, just quickly, um, again, this is not a surprise as Mayor Gans and others have discussed. We certainly have talked about this at budget workshops, at different city commission meetings, and we held our own public workshop because we knew the importance of this. The reason, to answer one of the questions, the reason why it's put on the agenda this way is because this is the normal protocol for a first reading to be put on the city commission agenda. And I'm not going to sit there and determine what is politically controversial. We, we treat everything the same as always and we even went one step further from feedback from the city commission about holding that public workshop so that's why it's on the way it is tonight and I think uh, the assistant city attorney can certainly uh, talk more about why things are put on the agenda the way they are but it wasn't because I didn't want the public to be heard because quite frankly on any one of these items that that the city commission wants public to be heard on, you have that right to do so. So that shouldn't even be an issue. 
Um, we have been working on the public with education, whether it's been Mr. Good's department or Mr. Gressick's department with his coastal and waterways uh, division. So we've already started talking to businesses and residents, particularly those that are on uh, in the Cove area or abutting canals about the uh, importance of not throwing uh, grass and other things, yard waste into the canals or parking over storm drains, which is a, one of the biggest problems we have from the barrier island out to the turnpike. Uh, again, I don't want to be redundant here, so I won't cover some of the things that many of you have already touched, but the biggest thing is that the road and bridge fund, if the city commission decides to pass this on second approval for whatever the rate may be that you deem appropriate, remember, we're already paying for maintenance um, operations to clean drains, things of that nature. So that money that's in the road and bridge fund isn't going to go into the general fund because that's not allowed either. What that'll do is free up that money to be spent on sidewalks and other road and bridge type of projects that we should be uh, doing already. So with that, unless there's any other questions, and I'll have Mr. Good, uh, I believe uh, one of the residents asked about the flood insurance. He can address that with her before she leaves. So yeah. thank you. Uh, you know, one of the things that we talked about also at the workshop is the state of Florida has put on a lot of unfunded mandates with their new uh, requirements that they're putting on cities. That's only going to get worse. Um, 22 out of the 31 cities in Broward County have had a storm have a stormwater fee. Majority, certainly the majority of the ones on the coastal, uh, on the coast, and, and there's a reason for that. Obviously, we have different uh, a, a different geographical layout than a lot of the cities that are more centrally, you know, or pushed out west. This is not unusual. This is something that other cities have, and, and they have it for a good reason. And to give you an idea of what some of the budgets were for some of those cities, if you look at their stormwater utility fee, Boca Raton has $10 million just for stormwater. That's their annual budget right now, I believe is what was put forward. Fort Lauderdale has 14.8, but if you've read the news, they're looking at upwards between 180 to some estimates to $200 million of infrastructure repairs that they need to tackle and deal with. Hollywood has 7.3 7 million. Pompano Beach has 7 million. Sunrise has 7.5. You've got uh, Tamarack with 6 million. Um, these are all their budgets for their stormwater fees per year. Um, that they, they currently have, that's what they have in their stormwater funds, excuse me, not right now. I don't want to say per year, but I believe that's what they have in their funds right now to go towards that. The stormwater, the, the Kingfisher Canal. Everybody's heard about the Kingfisher Canal. We've been working on it. We have a drain system that's coming forward to address really one pipe. That's a half million dollars to address that. How many projects do you think we're going to get done as the years go by, the infrastructure gets older and older? Are we going to be able to tackle and pull from the general fund or pull from the road and bridge fund, which we replenish with the general fund? When you steal from the road and bridge fund, you're going to end up hurting things that are transportation related, sidewalks, uh, busing, that type of thing that we do here for the city. You're going to have to pay for it somewhere. That's just the cost of doing things. If you have a car at home, and I said this the other day, if you have a car at home, every year you're not going to be you know, replacing your tires, but there is going to be that one year you're going to have to do some major work on your car, and it's going to cost you some money. I don't know a lot of people that put in a specific amount every single year in their money for a major car repair. Some do, some don't. But those things pop up. We're getting to that point based on the state mandates that are coming down and our aging infrastructure that we're going to have some serious projects. And we need to figure out a way to fund it. I sat up here in 2009 when I first got elected. We had the highest reserves we ever had at the time, $21 million, highest ever. I think it was a little higher than that, actually. People said that was crazy. That went down awfully quick without any work by the city as far as being able to control it when the economy completely bombed. Throwing a couple hurricanes in there, it eats away at things. So to say that we have the, the money that we have in the reserve and it's ridiculous for us to have that, if you look at what other cities have, their reserves are a lot different than ours. 
The reserves for the unassigned reserves in Pompano Beach are $49 million. Plantation's about the same. Water Hill, $18 million. Margate has $35 million and they have a population of 57,000. We have a very different view of philosophy as far as what we need to have in our unfunded reserves for this city. And I think where we are at is where we needed to be at, and it certainly was where people wanted us to be at a few years ago when they were wearing their Fitch shirts and were worried about a downgrade. Apparently when we got upgraded, twice, mind you, they put those shirts back in their campaign manager's uh, trunk and disappeared, and they're not around. They send others to come now complain about how much money we have in reserves. I find that very fascinating. Nobody likes to pay extra amount of money. I think the amount right now that was being proposed is four dollars, yeah, correct? Four dollars per month. We went through the utility tax. We had a lot of people coming forward and flat out lying. Cities, gonna, businesses are going to go under. The utility tax is going to ruin this city. It hasn't done that. The amounts that they were saying was going to cost us hasn't come to fruition for what they've said. I look at this, you know where this money is going to go, and it's going to go towards projects. And that amount's going to change per year. The gentleman said that you know the, our experts came forward and said, well, this is expected to go up. Well, yes, depending on the projects that come forward, it is. If you have areas in the city that are at that point where they've reached their mature line, and they are now in the decline, they have to be repaired. That's what happens. Things reach that end point, and they have to be replaced. People are going, to, are going to have to pay for it somehow. Do you want to keep pulling out of reserves? Or do you want to have a steady fund that you're able to track and know exactly where that money's going? And where somebody else, another commission sitting up here, can't decide that our priorities are the way it was, I don't know, 10 years ago, in which they wanted to give out 9% raises. That's what they gave out back then. There's a stretch of, I believe it was three or four years. 9% compounded year after year. That's what they gave out. Roller rinks that were built only to be torn down two years later. That's what happened in the city. If you've got a stormwater fee in there, you know where that money's going. It's being prioritized to the projects that need it the most, and it's going specifically for that. Again, I do agree with the point of saying you're asking for a, for, for a certain amount without identifying what the projects are. I'd much rather get the ball rolling at a smaller amount, know where the projects are, and then know what we need to budget. Because that money, that amount's going to change year to year, depending on what the need is. We might get to a point where we don't have a lot of major projects, and that amount for stormwater fee is going to be reduced and very small. It's going to be based on what the need is. And I don't think you can come up with a lot of super, perhaps you can, but I, but I think that the, the, the areas that we're going to attack are going to be things that, that I think everybody would agree are a priority for this city. It's just an aging infrastructure. The time has come. It's going to need to be addressed. It's not an easy thing to do. Nobody likes it. I pay it. Everybody's going to have to pay it. It's, it. Nobody likes to do that to anyone, but the money's going to have to come from somewhere. These issues, these problems aren't going to go away. We currently pay for the general maintenance and the day-to-day -day stuff that goes forward, but major capital improvement projects are going to have to be addressed. And, and, and you know that's something that we need to consider. I don't know what your proposal is to attack, to, to um, to deal with those, Commissioner Drowski. I don't know what your proposal is and how we're going to, to deal with some of these things that are coming down because what the state is pushing down on us is only going to get worse. So I don't know where that funding is going to come from. I would love to hear by the next reading where you think it might as opposed to this. Um, but I understand why we need to do this. And uh, nobody likes to put in an extra fee, but the bottom line is, this is something that the city of Deerfield Beach needs. I am amazed that people are constantly asking this city, who has one of the lowest uh, median price range, uh, prices, home prices in Broward County, ask us to go by with fees that other major cities, some of them in which they lived in, those same people lived in just a few years ago, they want us to try to deal with all the same issues with one hand tied behind our back. So, you know, there's a reason we need it, and, and I do support it. Commissioner Parnas? I make a motion to approve. I was there already. Commissioner Parnas made a motion. We have a second by Commissioner Battle. Now, with this moving forward, is this at the rate that's currently being proposed, or can that be adjusted? Um, Mr. Mayor, the ordinance before the commission tonight does not adopt the rate specifically. It actually provides for 
the, the final rate Just to be adopted sure by resolution, uh, which if the commission moves forward on this item would be a resolution after the second reading of this item. Okay, thank you. We have a motion and a second. We have a roll call, please. Commissioner Droski? No. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Parnas? Yes. Vice Mayor Battle? Yes. Mayor Gantz? Yes. The next item on the agenda is addendum uh, item A1. It's a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach amending the 2017-2018 schedule of City Commission meetings. City Manager? Yeah, this is just asking uh, the City Commission to move the meeting, regularly scheduled meeting on April 3rd, 2018 to Wednesday, April 11th and continuing with the April 17th, 2018 regular commission meeting as is. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Drosky? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Parnes? Yes. Vice Mayor Battle? Yes. Mayor Gant? Yes. City Manager? Yes, just quickly under uh, comments, if I can. Um, City Attorney's Office, and I would like to draft a letter to Florida Power and Light about on behalf of the City Commission. We've not drafted anything yet, um, but we would like to send them a letter as well as copying the Public Service Commission and the Governor and our Broward Legislative Delegation about the continued street light outages in our city because we are not getting any type of response that we feel is appropriate. Do we need a motion? Just general direction, so. that's okay. I, th I think absolutely. Okay. And then I'd also like to uh, thank uh, Kara Petty, uh, David Miller, Vicki Plaza Picard, Eric uh, Power and uh, others who were on the Brand Hilda Knowles or Brand Hilda Richardson Knowles Memorial Park uh, team. They were successful in getting an additional four hundred thousand from the uh, Florida State Legislature. So we'd like to thank our members in Tallahassee, including Governor Scott, who did uh, sign that uh, bill into um, reality last week. And lastly, uh, just. Going back to one of the items from earlier, um, dealing with the, the zoning letters, if I could, uh, I'd like to work with staff to bring forward where, as part of the, the process for any type of zoning or land use change, that we make it uh, mandatory that the property owner or the property owner or potential buyer of that property actually put a sign up that to on that property so as people, neighbors, or other businesses drive by that site, they can certainly see um, that there is a zoning, what the current zoning is and what the uh, new zoning will be and hopefully that will also help a little bit more than just getting a letter in the mail if that's okay with the city commission. I don't really need a motion but if we can move that forward in an ordinance here in the near future along with the other idea I think brought forward by Commissioner Drosky about widening the area depending on what the, the um, yeah, that was, that geography Yeah, that was a great idea. Is. We definitely need yeah. to make adjustments. That Commissioner Miller, you had a I, I just wanted to ask on that. Um, do you conceive of a sign that might even have a, a rendering of their, their ideas of what, if it gets proved, or, you know, this? I, I think it would have to just be very word and legal lease. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. But that's something we can certainly discuss with staff and the city attorney's office. <laughs> no, that definitely needs to be done. City Attorney, Assistant City Attorney? Uh, nothing further for me today, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Sir, Commissioner Miller? Yeah, I, it was mentioned the um, Kiwanis event at uh, Sullivan Park last Sunday. Uh, that was a, a tremendous event. And from the feedback I've gotten from many of the people in Kiwanis, I think they would like to have it to become an annual event, an annual family fun day at Sullivan Park. 
And um, my, my question is to the city manager, if it becomes an annual event, could we possibly get that parking space that's, uh, uh, you know, on the south side of the given parking? I mean, I understand we can use that for special events, so could this potentially qualify as one of those special events? Because parking became a problem, yes. especially when everybody had to look at all those yeah. vacant spaces. So yeah, yes, we certainly can. FDOT will allow that on special events. This would so we could be qualify as a you know, 500 event. people. So I'll yes. let them know, and yep. next year maybe and push it out. I know Mr. Miller is back there, so he's okay. duly noting that as well. Good. Uh, and the other thing, um, I guess Peggy mentioned it, or she's not here right now. Um, the no, you mentioned at least the signs about the no bike riding over the uh, over the bridge on the intercoastal literally when they were first put up i didn't know they were put up chris Morey told me they were i saw them but i haven't looked up and seen them since and people continue to ride if we want to promote bicycling to the island we have to have bigger signs so we don't get accidents with the cars and or pedestrians hit by bicycles on the on the walkway so we really I, I'm even calling for, I would like to see bigger signs where they're right in line of vision not something up here you have to really look for because nobody sees it and they don't obey it so uh, I, that's the two things I would care about that I wanted to mention tonight city manager you want to address something Yes, if I could just quickly on the bicycle signs, I know that Chris Morey has been working with the streets division on moving those. We'll certainly look at placing larger signs, but I believe, and it's something I'll check with Mr. Good and the streets department and with the attorney's office, but I believe the height is dictated by Broward County and FDOT regulations. So I just have to find that out, but if we can lower them, we'll anything certainly we can look do into it. To yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor? First thing, uh, Burgess, were we able to do anything with the uh, opportunity zone that we found about? Uh, yeah. I know that deadline yeah. is tomorrow. Yeah, we're, we're still reviewing that, trying to work something out, but that has to go through Tallahassee, right. as we explained. There's some issues there. However, um, we are working with the U.S. Uh, Economic Development Agency, and I believe they're setting up a meeting to come down next week to uh, look at the Dixie Highway Corridor as well as the Pioneer Grove District. Okay, thank you for that. Yes. On the uh, fence that we're going to put up on Dixie Highway, I got numerous calls, I received rather, numerous calls th this week uh, for a deputy to uh, actually be out there with those guards because the kids are running willy-nilly and uh, there was almost a big accident with an 18-wheeler. Uh, okay. So they were asking if we could uh, have them, you know, receive jaywalking tickets until that fence is up. Okay. okay, so let's uh, look into that for me. Uh, for the men on the dais as, as well as the women, this is Women's History Month. Uh, our Women's History Deerfield Beach uh, event will be at Oviedo McKeithen on March 31st. Cost is only $10. We'd like to see some men there other than Commissioner Drosky. Okay. Uh, and, and thank you for always coming out. Uh, the Broward County Women's History event is this Saturday at the Carolina Club. I don't have the cost on that right now. Uh, on March 30th, the extravag egg extravaganza at Oviedo McKeithen uh, for the children, but we do like to see you come out and volunteer and help us because there are just numerous kids all over that field out there. And uh, this is Commissioner Drosky. The flashlight S Easter egg hunt is on March 29th at Constitution Park. Always a great event. Please come out uh, and look for eggs in the dark with flashlights. <laughs> Thank you. And wear a helmet. City Manager? Yeah, just for clarification, Vice Mayor Battle, for the deputy, are you speaking in between Hillsborough and 4th Street in that area? Yeah, or are there the any area. other? Yeah, that's, that's what I area. thought. Yeah. Yes. So I'll talk to Lieutenant Brimlow after this, and we'll okay. get a deputy there Thank at you. the end of school and beginning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Parnas? Gloria, I have my ticket for that Saturday. 
and with Kathy and an, another couple. And we're hoping to fill a table. Um, last Tuesday, I lost two friends. Commissioner Popelski was one of my close friends for many years, and I'm going to miss him. Another death on the same day was another friend, Jeff Chester, who was a gadfly. He and I fought for 10 years on our computers. He made me look up things. He made everybody who tuned into his blog do research, get educated. He asked questions that you wouldn't think of to look things up and to learn. He knew condo law better than anybody I knew, and he wasn't an attorney. And his death saddened many of us, because he was a young man. So getting older as I am, um, death has become more common with my friends. And I know I'm going to miss them. The city will always miss Marty Popelski who did a wonderful job for eight years and was one of the most liked, from what I hear from employees, commissioners that ever sat up here. That's all I have. Commissioner Drosky. That's a tough act to follow there. But um, this Thursday, uh, March 22nd at 7 o'clock at Constitution Hall is my next town hall meeting. As you may recall, they're generally issue specific. This one will focus on the topic of education. Our school board representative and chair, Nora Rupert, will be there, uh, along with uh, Charles Webster, the government liaison with uh, Superintendent uh, Runsey's office will be there. Um, so we can just discuss the issues uh, that are going on in Tallahassee that affect our local schools and that affect our children right here in the city of Deerfield Beach. So if you can make it this Thursday at seven o'clock at Constitution Hall, that'll be the next town hall meeting. Um, in addition to that, please keep an eye on Southwest 10th Street. The proposed date for the uh, design proposals to be released by the Florida Department of Transportation is April 24th. That date is always subject to change, uh, but that's the target date for FDOT to have their next meeting to release the proposals. At a sneak peek meeting last night at Independence Bay, there are some troubling issues for the city of Deerfield Beach. Um, most notably, there's going to be, a, on both designs that were shown last night, there is a bridge right smack in the front of the entrance of the waterways community that can not only be seen by them, but by the northwest quadrant of Independence Bay as well. And then, you, of course, you have access issues for all the communities along that corridor, including the Publix Distribution Center and the Newport Center as well. So that's something definitely to keep your eyes on. Please attend the meeting and get your name on their mailing list so you get the newsletters, that you get the information that's being sent out by the Florida Department, Florida Department of Transportation and make your opinions known. They want to know whether we like this or we don't like this. And there's some things that I don't like that we have to make our opinions known. And, and, and others that live along these communities may have different opinions, but we need to at least attend and have our voices heard. Uh, I want to thank the city manager uh, for recommending the streetlights. I'm getting more and more calls from residents in District 4 about outages of streetlights uh, in District 4. Most recently, there's a quarter mile stretch in front of Quiet Waters Park on Powerline Road on the west side uh, that's out and has been out. There's random outages as well that haven't been fixed since the hurricane. So anything, and I know, I know Vice Mayor has repeatedly at these meetings uh, requested help from FPNL to get the lights back on. So whatever we can do, I think the letter is a great idea. So thank you for bringing, bringing that up tonight. Um, other than that, the vice mayor took all my other points tonight. So that's all that I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do want to commend staff and the good job with the Qantas event. Well, I was unfortunately out of town. I was unable to attend, but they did it on a very short notice that that, that entire event is, from what I understand, it was an outstanding event was put together just within the last few months. So I do want to praise staff for getting that done, putting it together. Uh, and I'm sure that's something that can certainly, you know, that event will grow and, and improve on. Um, we dodged a bullet with the attack on home rule with the state legislature. We were on the verge of losing our CRA. Um, and fortunately, with it was a last minute addition um, that would have taken away our CRA uh, probably within 
a very short period of time, like weeks, had it passed. And uh, fortunately, we were able to uh, have our voices heard and stop that from happening. Uh, so the, Tallahassee is constantly trying to enforce rules onto the into municipalities, and in my opinion, it's just not right. And usually, it's done with no rhyme or reason other than special interest, and it's a shame. Uh, uh, I do know that with all these things that are coming down the pipe with the FDOT, we need to try to work with them in situations that they've created here on Hillsboro. Um, they they have put things in place that have made situations worse. So I'm going to encourage staff to continue to work with them to try to address some of those issues that are out there, as well as some of the ones that were brought up here tonight. Um, we brought, we had a calendar, you know, we had a change in our data in our calendars. I, I do ask staff to try to be uh, sensitive to the Jewish calendar. Uh, I know we had one of our meetings recently that fell on a, on a Jewish hol uh, holiday. So if we could try to make adjustments to that, be sensitive to that, I'd appreciate it. Um, also, and this is something that came up a few meetings back, back, but one of the many things that Dan Bogner did for the city is he served on the community uh, roundtable for the Broward NPO. Uh, we have someone that's come forward to replace, and it was actually done with Mr. Bogner's blessing, ironically, just days before his passing. Uh, he contacted me and said he had somebody he would like to replace him. Um, so with his blessing, we have someone that will take a spot. So we're going to ask that person to come forward, fill out the application, and hopefully we'll see that on the next agenda coming up. I'm going to ask staff to continue to work with the HOAs in the Western District. Since we are remodeling the BSO substation, that has put their HOAs, uh, HOA meetings in limbo. Uh, I know we try to work with them in Constitution Park, but we need to do a better job, be consistent with it, and give them the opportunity to meet. We talk about community outreach. That's one of the first places that it starts with. So certainly in the Western District, that's very, very important. So I encourage everybody to do that. Also, and I don't like to plug businesses, but I will say this because there was something that pretty tragic that happened in this city. Uh, and some of you may have read this. And it's a it's a business that's over in District 4. Fat Boys Barbecue at the old little yeah, red, red caboose. They had two drunk individuals um, vandalize the, uh, the operation um, and wrote racial epitaphs and, and even uh, had a, a, a racially tinged tirade against them uh, when the police did come and arrest them. Fortunately, they were arrested. But I ask any of you to go out there. If you haven't been there, it's, it's great. Yeah. Go there. Show them that we love them and support them and have a great barbecue sandwich. I recommend the burnt tips. I haven't gotten there in time to be able to get them. You don't get to be my size without knowing what good food is. So I promise you, uh, you won't be disappointed. Uh, go out there, show them some love and some support. And uh, I, I just ask you to do that. Uh, I believe that is everything that we have. So I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.